Hey guys, it's Mix Bustos from ABS-CBN and we are here at the NBA store in SM Mega Mall getting to chat with none other than White Chocolate. Jason Williams himself. Jason, thank you so much. Thank you. For joining us here and welcome to the Philippines. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Of course, when you talk about basketball, your career, you spent championship with the Miami Heat, with the Sacramento Kings as well. How can you say your career has been with the NBA and how would you summarize all of that? You know, I, I think I had a pretty long career for, mm -hmm. for someone like myself. You know, I had a, a fun career. I think a successful career, you know. Um, I was blessed to have a bunch of good teammates. Every every team that I played for and some great coaches, Hall of Fame coaches, one in particular, Eric Spolstra, which you guys are uh, familiar with here in the uh, Philippines for sure. It's your second time in the Philippines, but you're looking forward to this time. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting closer to the fans, you know, and things like that, interacting and getting to see some three-on-three -three games. That's for sure. In your experience in time, I know it was around 10 years ago. Now you're back. Lots of things has changed. The game has changed as well. What can you say is the game right now, the competition, especially now that it's really expanded globally? I think the, the NBA is in great hands, you know. I think they have great players. Um, and I think it's a good thing that, like you said, you mentioned globally, uh, expansion. Uh, these guys that are coming from overseas and playing in the NBA are really good players, MVPs for the last couple years, and they're ahead in the race this year. So, like I said, I think the NBA is in a good place and with the teams that they have and, 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 and the athletes that they have. What about the most memorable experiences uh, from the teams you've played at? Of course, it's a championship yes. with the Heat and the Kings as well, but maybe top of mind, top two to three things, what have been the best for you? Uh, for sure, like you mentioned, the number one thing was, was winning the championship in 2006 with the Heat. But my first two seasons in the NBA with Sacramento are probably my most memorable, so to speak, because that's when I had probably the most fun and what I'm known and are remembered for. Of course, white chocolate is your unique style of play. What was it like? Of course, when we talk about that style of play, at that time, it may go against the norm, it's like physical and fundamental, but you really exuded that style of play. What was it like applying that in that sense? It was sort of just just what I did, you know. It was easy because um, I had practiced everything that you see me do. So I felt confident to try that stuff in the game. So it was just like me out there practicing, really. Just a follow-up question at that time. Was it tough? I mean, did you raise a lot of eyebrows and like, Hey, what's he doing? Sure, I think at some points, uh, sometimes my coaches really and I, uh, we didn't see eye to eye, but as long as uh, we were successful, that's all that really mattered. Playing with Hall of Famers, Shaquille O'Neal, Dwayne Wade, Miami Heat Championship, Gary Payton as well. Um, what does it take to win a championship? Um, it takes a lot, you know, and it, I, I think the journey to get to the championship, like, like the whole season, the practice, the training camps and things like that, um, that, that, that makes winning the championship worth its while, you know, because winning the championship is kind of, I don't want to say easy, but it, it's, it's a lot less hard than practice and training camp and things like that. That's true. When you talk about championship and making it big in the league, you know, sustainability aspect, you know, for you personally, what have you done? What did you do to be able to have that longevity part? You really have to take care of yourself. You have to, you know, I mean, it's cliche to say, but you have to eat right. You have to get your sleep, you know, and, and do things like that. You can't be... Uh, you can't be partying all the time and things like that. So and you have to keep practicing too. I was telling the kids the other day that once you make it to the NBA, it's not like you can stop working. You know, it's really like you have to start over and just keep working. It's just as hard. And that's most important now because of the competition. Of course, and everybody's doing that. Every year, there's kids wanting to come into the NBA and trying to take these older guys' spots. So the older guys just have to keep working. I want to get your thoughts and opinions on basketball being positionless. Right, centers like Nikola Jokic, like the European forwards, right? They can shoot, they can dribble, they can pass. What's your take on that right now, on how the game has evolved? I think the game has evolved tremendously since I've played, uh, for sure. But um, nowadays, if you can't if you can't shoot from 15, 16, 17 feet, it's going to be so hard for you to play. I think it's better for the game, it, it, uh, for me especially, because I like offense. I'm not a very defensive-minded <laughs> guy. So I want to see a bunch of points, and, and that's what we're getting. That's true. When it comes to being a point guard, if people would ask you, hey Jason, what does it take to be a great point guard at an elite level? Um, I would say first off, have good teammates. That'd be, that, that helps. For assists, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. I think just knowing your job, you know, knowing, knowing when to pass, knowing when to shoot, and just trying to get everybody organized in, in the half court. 
Now, um, when it comes to your stay in the Philippines, I know you spent a couple of days. What have you enjoyed the most? Was it the experience, the food? Was it what was it like? The people, the people. This is like I said, this is the second time that I've been here, and the people are just so friendly. And it's crazy to me that I, that there's this many white chocolate fans this far away from where yeah. I grew up and stuff like that. But it's just every time that I get a chance to come here, I'll be here for sure. Right. Uh, just for the benefit of our audience, when you talk about white chocolate, where did it really originate? Um, it originated in Sacramento. Uh, Someone in the PR department there tagged me with the nickname, and here we are today. Here we are today. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but maybe some of the food that you could remember that you've eaten so far. What is, what has been the best? You know what? Uh, I'm a very particular guy when it comes to eating. Uh -huh. um, but but Din Tai Fung is my favorite restaurant. All right. Uh -huh. um, so. Uh, the shrimp fried rice there is is very good. Uh -huh. um, I mean, pretty much their whole menu is good. So when I'm when I'm in a city that has din tai fung, I want to eat there as much as I can. Yes, you. There's one downstairs. There is. Yes, there is one downstairs. I had one. I had the shrimp fried rice for lunch on the way here in, uh -huh. on the, in the van. So yeah. I'm good. I think there's one in LA though. I'm not so sure. There is a couple in there's LA. A couple there in is. LA. That's true. That's right. Uh, just a parting shot. Um, you know, basketball is has evolved. Basketball has really been so competitive. Uh, what would be the best advice, the best things that you could leave to our audience for them to be able to reach at an elite level? I would just tell them, you know, just keep working hard and, and, and don't let anyone tell you that you can't do anything. If you really want to achieve something and you put in the time and the work and the practice, then the sky's the limit. Like I said, keep working hard and doing what you think you can do and don't let anybody tell you anything. Just a follow up, uh, of course, with the rise of social media, right? Everybody's so competitive. Everybody's maybe has a certain pressure. Definitely a factor. Yeah, I think it probably does in some young kids' uh, lives. Um, that's a tough situation. Um, I'm so thankful that I didn't have social media growing up. I mean, I think there's some good aspects about social media, but for the most part, for these young kids, I think it's, it's taking their attention away from things that it should should be on. Lastly, Jason, there's anything that you'd like to say to Filipino fans, all of your supporters here in the Philippines? What would that? Oh man, I just want to thank you guys for having me and have a good time. There you have it. White Charlotte, Jason Williams right here on ABS-CBN. Jason, thank you so much. Thank you. For joining us here. Appreciate it. Welcome to the Focus. Thank you. Thank you.